Hey everybody, how's it going? So thanks for coming along to this lesson of Planet Coaster Top Tips for Realism and this is lesson number 10. We're getting our theory on with this one because we're going to be talking about park zones. Right, okay then, so what are zones? And I've come into the demo theme park for this one to, to show you this in principle. Um, so theme parks are traditionally split into zones and this is so that you can manage staff and facilities more easily. So for example, a zone may share staff for rides. I mean, you may work on the roller coaster at the top in the morning and then flat rides in the afternoon and there's also a similar principle as well with all of your shop staff too so a lot of them are going to be cross trained so they can work in different types of shop throughout the week depending on the season and everything that you're having and the week that you're having so it also may as go as far as uh, services training as well so you might be cleaning the toilets in the morning you might then wash your hands and then serve lunch in the afternoon and then you may go across to the hotel uh, to go and check guests in at the end of the day so it's a way that theme parks are able to use this idea of training to manage their schedules and their rosters throughout the park so they don't have to have specific staff for specific purposes and then also zones usually consist of clusters of things so things like rides shops for food drink gifts games you know all that sort of stuff they also may uh, have other facilities in it too. So you may find that you've got things like toilets, you may have cash machines, uh, you may have phone boxes, you may have lockers, you may have some kind of guest services and everything. But remember though that don't, zones don't have to have one of everything. They can be linked together in a cluster. So like for example, you don't have to have a toilet per zone. If you're going to then put multiple zones together, you might just put your toilets and your key facilities like cash machines and retail sh uh, retail units for gifts and whatever you may put those on the border of your additional zones now zones should also be connected to your staff and your maintenance areas either by uh, wide enough guest paths or private service roads that side of thing you know as long as they can hold vans then you, you're good to go so let's check this in action a little bit more so you'd be very forgiven for thinking that this is not a very realistic looking thing. So, no, you're right, it's not. And I've only just thrown down some stuff so that I can talk through the principle. And what I'm then going to do is load one of the existing parks that I've done. I bet you can probably guess which one. So that I can show it to you from a Planet Coaster realism perspective. And of course, because this is theory, it doesn't have a pro or basics level. It's the same whether you're using ThingMakers Toolkit or Console. So it's the idea behind it. And this is very much that sub level of realism that I talk about it's something that you don't even realize is there but it's very missing when you miss it so I've thrown down three different zones I've got a coaster and two rides a coaster and two rides a coaster and two rides and a central maintenance area uh, in the middle here so the principle of the staffing would be uh, that the coaster would share its staff with the rides in its zone and this area here would be a zone this area here would be a zone and this area here would be a zone and theme parks would tend to call these something colorful it'd be like the the elements earth wind fire it would be colors red group blue green it could be cities insert cities <laughs> it could be uh, compass northeast south west whatever completely up to you if you want to do that now i tend to play that kind of thing in the background like i've never know i never mentioned it when i was doing reggae lake i'm not mentioning it when i do fundy uh, but in my head i've zoned off my my areas so the staff in this area would either rotate within the roller coaster with different positions you'd have somebody operating you'd have somebody uh, hosting you'd have somebody batching uh, that's somebody who sends people to the right cattle pens you'd have somebody at the merge point where you've got fast track etc they would rotate throughout the day but they would also be cross-trained on other rides so uh, in the morning you might do this coaster and in the afternoon you might do the swing ride uh, and then the following day you might do rising raptor and what you tend to find is you'll rotate within a zone the same would happen up here so we've got a, a Eurofighter blueprint that i did in a in uh, jeopardy point i think this is from um, and then two other flat rides and the same principle the staff would rotate and then the same here staff would rotate now what you also may find as well is that staff would be uh, cross zone trained as well so uh, the coaster up here so the Eurofighter the staff from here may be trained on our corkscrew and they also may be trained uh, over on the woody as well and so that they can share as many resources as possible 
get the picture. That's kind of how it works. Um, but all of your zones need to be connected to a maintenance area in some capacity. So in this instance, I've chosen to have paths that are wide enough to host fans and lorries and heavy goods vehicles. So I don't need private service roads as such. Uh, but what I have done is a private service road that leads from the coaster to the main path. And then the main path would then lead me round to uh, the actual maintenance area. Could also cut it through this way if I wanted to and out back that way. Just need to think about how that's going. But I don't need private roads on this one. Um, but you can do. Like you, you can sort your park around a, a central spine of roads. Or you, you, you would have seen it in Raygate Lake where I've got the road that goes around the outside of the park. Um, because I've got different maintenance areas and, and zones and everything. Choices completely yours and so when you're dealing with zones then i've got three different zones here and each one of these need specific facilities so um i've already put in down here uh food and whatever what you'll tend to find is that each zone will have some kind of food and drink offering they will have some kind of retail opportunities remember this principle of monetize as much as you possibly can uh so let's just throw down Hey, <laughs> something to drink, right? So you're always going to find that a zone will have some kind of food and drink offering. The same will apply to this other zone and the same also applies here. Now, also where you've got big rides and rides that are going to attract guests, the monetization piece really, really kicks in. So you're going to find you're going to have some kind of gift shop, you know, leave via a gift shop, retail opportunities, that sort of stuff. Uh, so you would have one at the exit of this ride here. Uh, you'd have one probably at the exit or close to the exit of the uh, Eurofighter. And we don't have one down here because we've got a dedicated shop close to the entrance here. So this is the first instance that we're going to see of zone sharing where the, the actual zone itself doesn't explicitly need to have a specific facility because it's shared with another zone so in this instance all of the gift shop is actually it's close enough to the end park entrance that this might be the first or the last ride of the day and you're going to leave via the gift shop at some point um the same also applies with toilets so you don't need to have something like toilets in each of your zones uh, you can literally just have uh, a border between the zones so this would be the perfect positioning for something like toilets and cash machines and guest facilities and lockers because it's serviced by three different zones um, it's accessible quite easily and the guests would pass through it and pass by it as they're walking through remember what we said about the principle of the pathing with the spread circulating space um, and so this is what we sort of talk about that is you're going to come from this coaster to this coaster via the central point you're going to come from this coaster to the entrance area via the same point so this would be an ideal location to firstly monetize put your gifts and games and stuff here because people are going to walk past here all the time uh, but also put your key facilities your cash machines your toilets your lockers your guest services all, all of that sort of stuff now remember as well that your central maintenance area needs to be somewhere it doesn't have to be in the center just because it's called a central maintenance area it doesn't have to be in the center but what it does have to be is accessible from everywhere in the park uh, and this is the, the that principle then of talking about the um the path width and making sure that you can get vans and lorries down but depending on your park and, and how you want it to run, you possibly would want to hide this away. So in this example of this park, I would probably actually consider moving this maintenance zone to probably somewhere around here. Now, the reason for that is it's serviced by the main road that goes through the car park. So you can easily get lorries in and out when the park isn't open. Um, it's also then easily serviceable to the rest of the park. Uh, but you would then also pair, pair this up with the backstage episode that we're going to do where we look at offices and maintenance areas and shared services and that kind of stuff because you then need a car park and it makes sense to have your staff car park close to your main car park. So let's jump into a park and actually see this in real life. Of course we were going to come to this park. You didn't think I was going to do a 28 episode series building it to never use it again, right? Uh, so yeah, this is Raygate Lake. For those of you that have never seen this before, this is the ultra realistic full complete park that we built uh, in the summer of last year. And uh, I'm using this park because this is the epitome of zones. This has got zones threaded 
throughout everything. Forgive the frame rate, uh, it's not the most forgiving of frame rates, and this is the reason why. <laughs> so, anyway, this isn't an advert for the for the for Raygate Lake. Uh, this is just to show you around. So, this is your traditional theme park setup. It has tickets and turnstiles and uh, all of the usual stuff that you find at the front of the park. This in itself would be a zone. Uh, it's got multiple maintenance areas. There's one at the front of the park here, either side of the tickets and turnstiles area. Uh, there's a major one right at the back here. And there's also a couple of subsidiary ones along the outside. The park is broken up into different areas or themed areas, depending on whether it's been themed or not. So there's one here. Uh, there's one here, which is the western area. Uh, there's one in the middle here, which is like the central park area. There's a smaller racing themed area here. Uh, there's what we call the Thrills and Hills episode. Uh, it doesn't have a, a, a name, but it's here with Tapio and the Wooden Coaster and Project X. And then we've got over here, Curse of Drakeford Manor, and then uh, the more modern area and then over this side we've got the hotel and then you've got car parks so this is just broken up into this area so let me just do a, a real tour of the park to show you this idea of zones and how it all comes together um so in the main entrance area here uh, you've got guest services up at the top here you've got food and drink offerings here uh, you have um uh, gifts and everything down here and then you've also got uh, a box office down here so you can do um uh, annual passes and hotel reservations and stuff. So, if you're wanting to see, by the way, what we mean by ultra realistic, everything is all kitted out and detailed and everything. Um, in the same way that you would have seen during through these through these episodes. So, the episodes that I'm creating at the moment for the top tips are all based on the things that I've used in in Raygate Lake. Uh, so, if you do want to go and see that, then of course the series the series is available um, out there. So then moving across to this other... Oh, you've got toilets, by the way. Sorry. You've got toilets here as well. Um, toilets and lockers are all along along here. And so then moving across to this area here, there are no toilets in this area. Uh, it's a zone in its own right, so it's got a couple of rides. Um, there are no toilets in this area because it's close enough to the entrance area for the toilets to, to be servicing there. Um, we have food and drink, of course, at the back here. And then we've monetized the area because this is going to be an area that a lot of people are going to be walking through uh, constantly. So there's a couple of games units, there's a couple of vending machines, and there's a couple of stuff that's that's pulled in here. And then moving across to uh, the western area, uh, this is serviced by serviced by toilets. They're at the top here, and this is a shared thing. Uh, so the toilets here are shared for this zone. So it's on the boundary of this zone and the western area, and of course this area here so this is using that that shared idea it also has games and, and everything in the middle uh, as you would expect and then it's got food food and drink along the outside um now this area doesn't have a gift shop it has a photo booth for the uh let me show you the photo booth uh, for the log flume um oh i lie <laughs> this was just to uh, make this functional, this building. So these are supposed to represent the stuff to do with the photos. This is not actually a gift shop. So hold that thought. Um, yeah, so it's got a, a photo unit because we're trying to monetize the exit of uh, Log Rush Falls, but itself isn't isn't actually a, a, a gift shop as such. And then you've just got the, the food and drink options that are all along here and a couple of games. And then we move across to the stand-up coaster where Outlaw Fury is. This is not serviced by toilets uh, for reasons that you'll see in a moment. Um, it is serviced, of course, by food and drink, um, uh, but it's only one ride. So this would probably be a, a sub-zone, a shared zone with either uh, the... No, actually, it would be a shared zone down here, thinking about it. That's what I did. It was either going to be with the hotel or it was going to be um, down here, but no, it's it's here because you've got the other... You've got the other... Uh, the SLC coaster um, and then the closest toilets that you have to here um, is just up here by project x in this little building uh, right down there or it's at the uh, bottom down here so you can see that i've put a coaster but it doesn't have any toilet facilities i've put the railway um station up here but it's not serviced by toilets you have a gift shop at the top here um which is a shared zone between uh, this top one uh, the bottom western area because this is also the exit of uh, Gold Rush and there is no gift shop here either it's serviced by this area as well um, this again does uh, so this this coaster the um, 
Hulk, Hulk races. Uh, it does have a, a, a photo unit at the bottom here just to again monetize the exit of the ride. Uh, but there's no actual gift shop. But this is the first area down here that we see an arcade. So we've got monetized stalls everywhere else. Uh, but here is the first time you have a built-in arcade. And that is sharing everywhere. So this is one of those moments of very, very rare facilities that you will include where you don't have any arcade here. You don't have an arcade down here. You don't have an arcade here. Um, but you do have one in here. So no toilets in this area. Um, I, I know I keep banging on about the toilets, but it's probably the easiest one to explain the idea of shared zoning. Uh, so there's no toilets in this area because those toilets that would service this area are down here. Uh, down by our swing, screaming swing. And for that reason, this area here has no toilets. The rapids area has no toilets because they're all serviced by this one area. Um, at the top then, we've got the Thrills and Hills area. Um, and so this again, this is serviced by everything because it's a, it's a thoroughfare to the to the to one of the newest rides. And it also comes around the back here, right? So this is, this is serviced by uh, everything. But toilets. Uh, <laughs> we've got a gift shop at the top. We've got loads of food and drink options. We're monetizing the exits of the ride, um, and so. And I think there's cash here as well somewhere. I think it's up by the gift shop. Um, coming down to the uh, this area here. So this is the newest, uh, the newest of the areas. Um, this isn't actually serviced. Oh, no, it is serviced by toilets up here. I was like, I don't remember putting toilets in here, but I do. They're up here. So this area is serviced by the toilets um, that are up here to so all of these. And then you've got monetized options. You've still got food and drink. And again, there's there's differing levels of food and drink. So by now, you get the idea of what, what we're trying to achieve, right? So let's talk staff. Let's talk about the actual staff and, and the training and everything. So this park would be big enough that it would be split up, as you've seen, into multiple zones, whatever you're going to, whatever you're going to call them. Um, so you would tend to find that the staff uh, for the racing coaster and this middle bit, they would all be cross-trained on each other's rides. You've got a couple of coasters. You've got a couple of headline rides. Um, they would all be, uh, they would all be cross-trained, and they would, they would just go where, where they needed in that in that area here. You would then probably say that the zone uh, would would come down, or there would be a separate zone that comes down through the western area, which includes the stand-up coaster, the SLC, the log flume, and this area down here. So all of your staff would be cross-trained in this area, and that would be another larger zone. Over in the new area, that would be a zone in its own right. Uh, so you would see that everything from uh, the rapids point down here, so including the screaming swing, um, these flat rides here, the uh, the RMC that we've got here, and also the uh, Curse of Drake from Manor and Centurion at the bottom here, this would all be one zone. And once again, they're all incorporating each other's training. This is mainly flat ride heavy on this one. The, the coasters would cross between the two. And then you'd also have one final zone that lives at the top here. This would incorporate the, uh, the rapids, the wooden coaster, the flat rides in the middle, and also uh, Project X, the wing coaster at the top. And again, staff would uh, would go to and from. So that just gives you a, a bit of a, a bit of an idea of how that is all set up in terms of staff. Um, what about maintenance and facilities, though? So like I've, I've spoken the last one about there having to be access to everything, right? So straight away from the car park down here. Uh, we have ourselves a staff maintenance entrance area and we already have instant access to the main road to uh, some kind of warehouse facilities that are, that are living down here. There is then an outside perimeter road that goes all the way outside the, the park, heads into the staff area. So this is where all of the staff uh, would live. <laughs> this is where they all work, um, along with all of their canteen facilities and everything. But then that has access to this top area here. And this is where the main bulk of the maintenance happens. Uh, this is this is where the magic happens. This is where you've got recycling and gardening and uh, ride maintenance and engineering and all of those like park services, um, continuous improvement, all of that. sort. you know, the guys that put weather vanes on lift hills, they all live here. Uh, in this part of the park then you have a perimeter road that comes around the outside um 
and then it comes back to this little mini area and this is a mini area that would service the likes of project x tapio uh, the rapids and many of the flat rides around here uh, and then the road continues around the outside of the park and then it veers off and comes up to the back of project x so the lore of the park the story the canon or whatever you want to call it of this park is that project x is a relatively new coaster it, it would have been awkwardly placed because they had the space to do it and that's why the uh, the main road comes up around the back of tapio rather than going down here plus it's at the top of the hill and it's difficult to get to so having a, a road around the back is less less hassle this road then continues around the outside here, uh, and then that services um, our stand-up coaster on its way past. Um, and then it also services the hotel on its way past as well. And then it just finishes its loop and then heads back out into a car park and then has access to the main front road here. I mean, it's probably not the most efficient design, um, but it is what it is. It services it. Um, and then dotted around you have these little mini maintenance areas here so um, this one obviously has access to the main road and then it has an access into the park all of the paths within the park are wide enough to take vans and of course those vans and lorries would never ever wander around the park whilst it's open so that's why you have the outside perimeter road if you needed to get uh, transport and everything if you needed to transport something from here up to the back you'd go through the car park and around the back service road so you're not actually affecting your uh, your park itself and, and and its operations so the slc this has a very small maintenance area well i say small it's a big maintenance area itself um but the actual access point is here so you just drive a van up to the side here you'd offload what you needed to do into the maintenance area and then you've just got this whole area to work in as a as a, as a maintenance as a maintenance thing likewise with a stand-up coaster um the in case you were wondering by the way they're all detailed on the inside as well um just in case you were wondering so yeah this this would then be serviced uh, up to here and then it's got access to the main road as it goes uh, as it goes out. Project X is the same. Uh, it has access to the service roads through the back, so we're hiding it from the front. Um, and then this would be the uh, the actual maintenance shed of the wing coaster. Which appears to be testing. Um, Tapio was ever so slightly different. This needed a different uh, strategy. So. Uh, where's my maintenance area? Sorry, it's up here. There we go. Um, I know that the frame rate of this makes this a bit painful to, to look at. So um, this is the maintenance area then for Tapio. It's just, a, it's just a shed. Here's the service area and the road for that is attached here. And then that comes down to the main path. Um, and that's because the topography... Oh, posh word, topography. It's because the topography of this land, um, it falls away suddenly. So you can't get down to this back service road from this area. And plus the actual wooden coaster was in its way. So for that reason, we had to bring it out to somewhere that was level. And then they would have to find their way back through whichever way. Um, I think the route is this way. Because we've got stairs and stuff here, so they would have to come around this way. But that's okay. That's quite that's quite common. You you do have the facility to to service Tapio from here, and that's why this was set up so it could service the rapids and the back of Tapio. So this would only be for ride maintenance and servicing. Um, and likewise, the area for the rapids is serviced by two. So you've got one here, and you've also got one here. And of course, you've got the main hub. That would probably service it as well um and then we've got uh hot hog races it's the same that literally just backs on to uh backs onto the main path um with this one there was no access road or service road needed uh, it was just sufficient enough to go let's just back it onto a path and then they can find their own they can find their own strategy uh the rmc where is it down here um this had an actual service road, dedicated service road that was created uh, that went straight into the main part, uh, main area, main road. Um, and that's because this is a, a, a like a last minute addition. They had to sort of hide this towards the back and, and bring it down this way. And then the last one, it's not the last coaster in the park. There's plenty more to see. Um, but the last one on here is, uh, the, is Centurion. The maintenance area is here and that backs straight onto the car park. And of course, you've got gaps in the fences and everything to accommodate the lorries and vans that are coming in and out. And so uh, each of these areas, then the ones that I've, that I've pointed out, they would have at least one toilet between them 
uh, they would have some kind of ATM, some kind of locker storage facility, uh, and some kind of information and guest facility, as well as all of your multiple stories. So, like I say, when I say that they would have at least one, it would be serviced by it. So it may be a shared on a boundary, but it has access to at least something. So that gives you a bit of an idea of, of how this all looks from a from a big, big, big park perspective. But I wonder what it would all look like in a park that Will willfully breaks these rules. Hmm. So all of that is good and well in a park that's traditionally set up. You know, one that's got an entrance area and tickets and turnstiles and big fat rides and all of that sort of stuff. But what about a park that breaks all of those rules? So I've just popped really quickly into Fundy Fun Spot. This is a series that I'm running on a Sunday at the moment. And uh, this part here is the end of episode four. So I haven't done anything with it. So no, no spoilers if you're following the series or anything. Um, but this is a park that's been set up that breaks the traditional rules it doesn't have tickets and turnstiles it will have a maintenance area and that's going to be an episode in its own right but i just wanted to show how the principle of zoning is still present even in a park that breaks rules so you're probably familiar with what's inside the dome um where's my there he is. Uh, <laughs> hello. Uh, so inside the dome, very much based on Fantasy Island at Skegness, if, you, if you're not following the series. Um, and it's broken up into three very distinct areas. Or in this instance, it's heavily themed areas. We've got a pirate area. We've got a Caribbean uh, carnival type area. And we've got a more Mayan style Mexican uh, adventure area want for a better phrase so are you sensing any kind of familiarity here with what we've been talking so this whole thing would is split up into three zones the three very distinct theme areas in this instance it's very possible that the staff within the zones are all cross-trained this staff member on this roller coaster may come down to the junior coaster they may be trained elsewhere but let's look at the principles that we were talking about so the, not every single area of this has toilets. So at the top here, we have toilets. And that's in this little building here. Um, we also have a, a pub down here that doesn't have toilets. Um, because it's being set, those toilets are being served elsewhere. So they don't have to have toilets in this, in this pub, in this bar. So that would be served by this area. This bar itself would be a separate zone in its own right. It's run by uh, Fundy Fun Spot. It has a gift shop at the top here, but we don't have a gift shop down here, and we don't have a gift shop down here. Hold that thought. Uh, we have plenty of food going on. So uh, in here, I've got... That was... I don't even know what that is. What's loud? <laughs> I've got uh, loads of food that's sitting down here. Uh, I've also got food outlets here. Of course, the bar is going to serve food. So this area is serviced a lot by food. What about maintenance? Well, maintenance is, is a difficult one when it comes to something like Fundy Fun Spot because traditionally you'd have transfer tracks and you'd have maintenance sheds and you'd have service bays and everything like that. Fundy Fun Spot doesn't do that because it breaks the rules. Um, but what it does have is an access area, an access point here. So you, because this is a very light ride, they've designed this to, to be a very low maintenance, light maintenance ride. This doesn't need to have access to things like vans and lorries and, and whatever. It doesn't need a direct road access. It still has access though. That access is through uh, past uh, Whirly Rig. Um, and so what would happen during the, the closed season or when these are all closed is all of this would be removed. The trains would come into the brake run, they get dismantled by hand because they're small enough to do so and they get moved out and then they, they get moved out of the pyramid in some way. It would either come um, down this way to the main road or they would find a way of, of bringing it out to the back here. So in later episodes, as I said, this is going to have a full on maintenance area um, and the maintenance area at the moment is thinking that it's going to be either here or here because it has to be close to an access road so this is going to have a car park eventually it's going to come out this way oh spoiler alert uh, this is going to have a car park that's going to come out this way so it's got access to the main road here um, or it could have a dedicated um, access point up here so they're my two they're my two locations 
for that and then everything else is in the middle and because fundy fun spot is literally rides in a car park elsewhere um there is going to be no landscaping there's going to be nothing fancy it's all just going to be like slot down you can get stuff in and out easily so the other areas then the other areas down here also serviced by lots of food so here's a, a food outlet down here um, there's an italian restaurant uh, or pizza place that's here um and then, and then in the adventure area, exactly the same. We've got a food area here. We've got a, a tortured pun chicken restaurant, poultry geist here. Um, and then all along the outside of the dome is loads and loads and loads of food. So what I'm doing here is I'm now going to split the rest of Fundy Fun Spot up into multiple different zones. There's going to be one here. There's going to be one here. There's going to be one here. They will all have minimal food and drink offering because the dome services the lot shared facilities. They will have grab and go units, but they're not going to have major ones. So uh, like I say, it's all serviced by the, the dome here. Now, toilets for the two for the bottom two. They don't have toilets per zone, um, but what they do have is one toilet block that sits in the middle. So it's a shared facility between the two. Likewise with cash machines. So there are no cash machines at the top by the pirates, but the cash machines down here service the entire inside of the pyramid. The idea of doing stuff like that is so that we can start to rotate our guests around the pyramid. Again, it's the space circulate and whatever. Um, so the idea is that if you're up here and you need cash, you'd come down this way to get cash. If you need a toilet, you're not far from a toilet. If you need food, you're not. You're even closer to food. And then, of course, the rides themselves have different profiles. So in this one, we've got coaster, one ride, flat ride. Um, down in the uh, the Mexican area, we've just got two rides. And then over here, we've got another ride here. And I would imagine that one of the, the coasters and stuff would probably be serviced by this this one out here so that's just what i wanted to show you in terms of zoning and, and facilities sharing um at the moment this doesn't have oh no this does have guest services i'm sorry this does have guest services and that's serviced down the bottom here so uh there is one info booth uh, info booth info booth that uh, services the entire pyramid here and that's that's down here so it has that idea of guest services but i've not put lockers and stuff in yet um because this is this is still too new but i just wanted to show that come to life in a park that uh breaks the rules because it means that you don't necessarily have to stringently stick to it and panic if you move away from it it just has to be that subliminal all the way through threading through the park that it's you just break it up into chunks of, of his own so guys i really do hope you found this episode uh, interesting thank you so much for getting to the end of this episode and if you have liked it then please leave a like on the video um this this park that you're seeing this whole mess uh is on a sunday so if you want to come along and join us for fundy fun spot then i would love to have you all there and of course if you're already joining us i will see you on sunday uh guys thank you so much you know what to do until we speak again please keep safe look after yourselves i'll see you next time Bye-bye.